Kenya is a developing country in Eastern Africa where half of the population still lives under poverty line. Beside that, uh, Kenya has the fourth largest HIV epidemic in the world. This means actually that, uh, for example, in 2013, uh, more than 1.6 million people were infected uh, by this terrible disease. And roughly 100,000 people uh, died uh, by these AIDS-related illnesses. Moreover, there are more than uh, 1.1 1, 1 .1 million orphans to this epidemic. But uh, uh, how did I, how I ended in this country? Uh, and decide that what takes me back to this country year by year. Uh, let me tell you my story. My story started in 2009 at a very boring university class. So I was studying there, we were studying about uh, developing countries and the teacher had a really sleepy voice. And uh, uh, I almost fell asleep when I realized that I rather go there in those developing countries and I rather see with my own eyes what uh, what does it mean, uh, poverty? How the everyday people are uh, reacting uh, to poverty? What do the children think about it? What do they eat? How do they play? And I, I wanted to have something I call a skin experience. I wanted to feel on my skin what's happening there. And this was the result. This is a really bad uh, sunburn on my neck. And uh, I, I really wanted to become like them. And this was the result. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, I thought that sun cream is for lazy tourists, uh, but then I realized it's very useful. Uh, so uh, I decided that I quit my university on the next day, and uh, I started uh, looking for um, volunteer organizations in developing countries for all over the world. And I, write, I, I wrote thousands of letters. And, um, my first try was to find a big NGO with a big impact and a lot of experience. And uh, I went in England and I started 10-month um, training, uh, which was for volunteers uh, in Africa. And uh, after four months, I, I decided that this was too big for me, too impersonal. I wanted something more, more personal, uh, more explorable, more new for me. So, I quit this school, well, let's, let's say more honestly, I was kicked out from this school <laughs> uh, uh, because I had some conflicts there, but let's not go into these details. And I, I came home, so this was my first try to go in, in Africa. I didn't succeed, I was a bit depressed. What's next? I, I, I started to search for smaller organizations. I decided to go without a sending organization on my own responsibility. And, uh, and uh, I still consider as a miracle, I, I found on a hidden website a small organization. There was no picture at all. There was just one sentence that we are an orga organization from Kenya and we are looking for volunteers in our small school, Mr. Okomo and an email address. So I wrote a big letter, about two pages, presenting myself, who am I, what I want, and uh, what are my experiences. And uh, in the end of this letter, I asked, can I come volunteer uh, to your place? The next day, the answer came, and it was surprisingly short. It was saying, yes, Mr. Okomo. <laughs> so I decided to answer also very shortly. I said, OK, Balaj. So, <laughs> uh, in, in, in a month, I, I went, I bought the airplane ticket, and this is how I met Mr. Samuel Okomo personally um, on this uh, Ruzinga Island. And this is this wonderful man. He's a very respected man on the island. He's a teacher as a profession. And what I want to mention uh, here, which is very important, that this project uh, is a local initiation. So it's not us who started, or not a Western organization who started this project, it's them. This Sam Velocomo had 14 brothers and sisters, 14 siblings, and he was the, he was the only survivor. All, the rest of his family died, and he was helped by a missionary uh, to, to, 
to get education and, and uh, through education he believes that education uh, was helping him to survive. So after this he decided to start his own project and he started, uh, he established a, a private school on this small island and he named it Sargi Education Center. And um, this is how I ended up here and I spent in 2009 four months uh, on this island and I was living together with Samuel's family. He has two wonderful wives and, uh, and eight children. And uh, this is his uh, seventh child. Uh, and to, strength, to strengthen this personal relationship between us, which is, I think, very important when you are uh, doing a, uh, a charity work, uh, they did a very cute thing. They named this child after me, so this is Balaj Bernardo Como. <laughs> they <laughs> and and I'm his godfather, and uh, and I I really like him, and uh, probably he's the first uh, Balaj in Kenya. And they call they cannot really pronounce it, so they just say Balas Balas all the time. And yeah, and this is Samuel and I spent four months living with them, which, uh, and we became in a, uh, in a very good relationship with, with his family. Um, so I, I, I went to this island, this wonderful, but in the same time, uh, very difficult, uh, in many point of view, island, and uh, I spent four months here, and one thing I want to mention that uh, around 30,000 30, people are living on this island, and 40% of the population is HIV infected, which is a very big number. This means that very many orphan children are living on this island, and, and not all of them is going to school. So, so that's why it, it was very crucial, uh, this, this project, it's very crucial, the help there. Beside that, the main economical activity on this island is, is, uh, is the fishing. But this is also a very big problem because lately in Lake Victoria, the number of fishes has gone very low because of many reasons. One of these reasons is the illegal fishing. And the second reason is that this is actually, it's called an island, but they connected this island with the mainland. So actually it's a half island now. now. And, and uh, they disturbed the natural flow of the, of the fishes, which was also very bad for the environment. Um, so, uh, so I started in, in, in the first few months I was, uh, in the first few weeks, I was teaching in the school. I was teaching mathematics, English, uh, handcraft, uh, social studies, and it, it, it was a really good experience for me. And uh, one thing I noticed there that these children are very uh, motivated. They really want to, to learn. And uh, they believe that uh, um, education is the key uh, to to break out from, from poverty. So uh, it's a very funny thing that the teachers are teaching poems to the children. And when a, a, a white or a muzungu, how they call the whites, when a muzungu guest is coming there, they make these children to tell these poems. And these poems are about, um, about uh, their belief and their problems. For example, there is one poem which uh, title is Education. And one child goes in the, front and, in the front and says, we have a poem entitled Education. And the poem, it goes like, education, education, education is the key. Uh, it is through education that I can become a doctor, how they say, that I can become a teacher. It is through education. Father, give me education. Education is the key. Thank you. <laughs> they say it like this. And, and they are saying poems also about AIDS. And it's very touching when you see these small children whose parents uh, uh, were prob probably died from this terrible disease. And they, these children are telling this poem like, AIDS, AIDS, where have you come from? AIDS, AIDS, where have you come from? You came dancing like a monster. Like a monster. Uh, I resemble a ball being kicked by players. No one to take care of me. Uh, my mother was heavy, my father died, 
uh, followed by our little sister. AIDS, where did you come from? AIDS has no cure. Thank you. <laughs> and these poems are going on like this. It's, it's very touching to hear, hear these poems. So I started to teach, and what motivated me that these children are very creative. For example, this is a chopper I noticed. It was built by an eight-year-old kid called Daniel, and I met him on, on the streets of, uh, of Utajo village, and, and I, I wondered how an eight-year-old child could, could build a chopper like this from garbage, and I asked him, that, can I buy this from you? And he said no. I offered him 10 euro, but he still didn't want to sell his design. He, <laughs> he was very prompt on that. And uh, yeah, after, after teaching a few weeks in school, I realized that I'm, I'm, I'm not a trained teacher. Uh, and uh, I didn't see, although we were laughing a lot with the children and we had a really good time, I didn't see a real progress in, 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 in their development. So. Um, I remained only with the handcraft, and I started to teach uh, another very international language, which is football. And I started to train football for the children, and uh, they, they were very motivated because in the same year, in, two, in 2010, it was the, the World Cup going on in South Africa. So everybody was motivated, and it was a very special thing because on that island, uh, they didn't train football for such young children uh, like we had in this school. So we made a, a field. We, uh, local fishermen were helping us to, to make the net for the goal. And they were helping us preparing this field. And we started training three times a week, these children. So, uh, and after a while, we noticed that, that uh, more and more people come to watch our trainings. And then we decided, for example, to invite uh, the biggest enemy, the, the neighboring village, to, uh, to make a football game. And, and then more than 500 people came to watch this game. And uh, after that, we thought that we could use uh, the power of football to, to teach them, to talk, uh, talk with them, to, uh, to talk with them about the problems, what they are facing every day. And, and football was a very good tool, uh, tool for that. And then soon we got our first ball. First, they, these children were playing uh, with uh, balls prepared by themselves from this old garbage and polythene bags. And uh, you can see this child is called Beckham. This, this is his real name. And he is very happy uh, with, with, with the ball. And we have uh, two other very good defenders. We had two Fidel Castros, and they were the uh, defender. So we had a very good uh, team, and uh, let me show you a, a short video uh, about how uh, they developed through the time in football. Um, and I, I will comment uh, on, on this video. Yeah, so this was our first training. It was terrible. It was like rugby. Like, you will see later that the children were running. Uh, uh, for the ball in one team. So then I decided to teach them this technique. I put some balloons on their legs, and this was very good to, to teach them how to defend and attack the ball. Uh, up. And then even the camera got better. Uh, and this is Sheldon, uh, one of uh, the best players uh, we had. And this uh, here they are training for uh, uh, the first big game uh, the big, against the big enemy. The 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 game. Really. This is the first now game. You can, you can see them uh, the in, in the new. Uh, uniforms. This is the first game. Uh, they look very uh, trained and serious. And then the game starts. This is a very excellent pass going on there. And here you will see the, what I teach with the balloons. This was a, a very good defense. <laughs> and now they can get some water. Smit can never say gojo. A baba to fear a ruin you make yakatani ni gojo got a gojo. A ma baba gigi dio. Useless. Very useless. So, uh, I, I was very happy that, when, that, uh, when, when we turned back to the island next year, and next year the training was still going on. So they, 
they, they, they went on with this training because they felt that it's something which keeps, uh, keeps the children busy. Um, so in, after I went, I spent four months on the island. And um, when I went home, I started to, to tell the story of this island to my friends. And, and uh, this, is when, this is when it came the idea of, of um, making a project. So my friend came with this idea to name this project, I Have a Brick in Kenya. And we decided to sell these small postcards uh, with this name on it, I Have a Brick in Kenya, for five ron, five lei. And we decided, uh, since they believe that education is the key for a breakout for, uh, from the poverty, we, uh, we wanted to build a, a school. And we used these BRICS uh, donations and we started to build a new school for them. And it, it took uh, a bit long, but so, uh, little by little, the, these four classrooms were built. And, and last year, finally, we could have the official uh, opening ceremony for this school. And uh, we started with 100 children, and now more than 260 children are learning in this school. Um, and what surprises me that uh, uh, next year, uh, or last year, they sent me this picture, and, and they told me that uh, these children are organizing debates uh, between them, and they take it very seriously. And I, I could, I, I felt very uh, that this is a very good progress in the school because when I first went there, it, it was still a new thing for them. But now uh, they are org organizing all these uh, creative things in the school. And last year we also did uh, a project called the Solar Cooker. Uh, another big problem on this island is the firewood. Uh, almost all the tree is cut on the island. It's a very dry island. And uh, in this school, the, the, the cookers are cooking with, uh, for the children using firewood, which is quite expensive. So we were trying this uh, technique, which is called solar cooker, which, which is uh, collecting the sun heat in one focal point, which you can use for uh, heating the water for them. And uh, they, they can prepare uh, food for the children. Another very uh, nice project uh, we have, we started also last year, it's the widow support group. We have 20, 20 widows, 20 women in this group. Every, each of them is uh, uh, infected with HIV. These are the toughest uh, ladies in all around the world, after my, my, wife, my wife maybe. Uh, and uh, we started to work together with them and, uh, and we decided uh, to give them goats. And we started another, another project which was called I Have a Goat in Kenya. And uh, we gave this uh, wonderful woman, uh, each, each of them, one goat. And, uh, and uh, they, they will start uh, doing business with these goats. Uh, it, it, it's a very recent picture, so I, I hopefully next year when we are going back to, uh, in February to the island, these goats will grow and they will have a successful business with them. And actually, in, it's very important that on this island, sometimes it's more uh, easy to work with women. It, they are sometimes more uh, reliable, uh, more serious than men, and this is why we decided to work with them. And uh, we, have, we have a lot of plans uh, for the future. Uh, I, I told you that next year in February, we, we plan to go back uh, in Kenya. And uh, I, I will just mention uh, one of our plans, which uh, we want to try. Uh, we want to introduce, um, in a one-year time, a project uh, called computer learning. We want to... Uh, I believe that in every country uh, the, it's very important to start uh, computer to start teaching computer for children, and uh, for that we want to use uh, I don't know if you ha heard about it a uh, small computer called Raspberry Pi, which is a credit-sized uh, small computer which uh, runs on two or three watts, which means we can use uh, small solar panels to run it. And you just have to connect a screen, a keyboard, and a mouse to it, and you can start teaching uh, uh, programming, and uh, you can use these small computers for teaching in school. Um, 
And I want to finish my speech with, with this uh, very funny picture which the, which the children made for us. Sargi Education Center will shine in the name of Romania. <laughs> um, thank you very much for your attention.